Okay, um, I'm making a 2 4 no limit heads up video uh, for Card Player TV. Uh, this is Taylor KB from CardRunners.com. Um, I'm making a heads up video here because I'm actually going to be writing an article for uh, one of the next issues of Card Player, or an issue that's coming out within a month or so, um, about heads up play. And I'm just going to talk about some of the concepts here and um, see if I can't make a decent little demo video and show you some of the stuff we do at Card Runners. Okay. First of all, I'm playing against this guy that has 3,500 at a 2-4 no limit table. That's something you should think about because the guy has almost 10 buy-ins in the table. He's obviously a good player. It's probably someone I wouldn't play against except for I'm trying to show a video against a pretty solid player. I raised King-10 suited and he's re-raised me pretty instantly over the size of the pot. So I'm going to muck the hand um, and just kind of... Uh, actually, that was about a pot size raise right there. But I'm going to muck the hand. 10 king suited, uh, in position, the first hand I've seen him raise. I'm going to give him credit for one and then just kind of, you know, go from there. Um, but yeah, he, he did raise me just a little bit over the pot size there. I'm going to raise him uh, up to 36 with the 10A suited. He's raised me and, uh, you know, this is a pretty solid hand. I have to figure this guy's a pretty aggressive player. When you sit down against a heads-up player and he has this much money on the table, you just have to assume that he's a, very, that he's a good, good, solid, aggressive player. Um, guys don't get that much money on the tables when they're playing tight and passive. It's just impossible to do that. So if you'll see what I did there is I had a, a pretty solid holding, 10 ace suited, and what I think is an aggressive opponent because he has a big stack, he's playing heads up, and, and uh, he's already re-raised me once pre-flop. So he raised me, and I just re-raised him with a, with a solid hand, and then I took, down the, I took down the pot. Now, if he had called me right there, I would not have liked my situation that, that much. However, it may have been a decent spot for me to bet again because he has to kind of figure that that I have a pretty decent hand myself because, um, you know, sh seeing that I've shown strength pre-flop and on the flop, and then if I had bet the turn, it might have been a good spot to double barrel right there. Um, and then if he had, like, shoved all in on me or something, I would have had to fold the hand. So what I'm trying to do against this guy, that I, 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 I've deduced that he's probably an aggressive player, heads up. I'm going to play pretty, pretty tight pre-flop. Um, not because I, I want to get run over. I'm not going to get run over by the guy, but I, I don't want to be... I don't want him to kind of get the impression that I'm playing very loose and playing too many hands because good players, when they see other players playing too loose and too many hands, are often um, you know, going to start to bluff a lot more. So in this case, I'm going to play, be selective with my hands pre-flop. However, post-flop, I am going to bluff a decent amount. Okay, he's raised it up to, he's bet 18 into a 23. I'm going to raise him right here, actually. I'm going to raise him up to 56, which is a little bit over a three times raise. Um, I have two over cards here, which is key. Now, if he does call me, which he does, I have a chance to hit an overcard that could make the best hand. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and double barrel this guy right here. And that's what double barreling is when you, you, know, you bet once and you don't have it, and then you, you bet again because you think you can get the guy to fold. Um, I'm going to bet 115 into this pot, and which is going to leave about a pot size bet. I, I, I think in retrospect, I would have maybe wanted to bet a little bit less right there. Um, but I'm going to have to actually fold. I wanted to leave myself about a pot size bet on the river. Um, if he had called me right there so I could possibly get so, have some fold equity. Um, I'm going to fold right here and just let the hand go. But what I'm trying to show you guys is that I'm playing pretty tight pre-flop, um, but I am going to be mixing it up post-flop with this guy. And, and by tight pre-flop, I don't mean I'm going to just fold a bunch of hands. I do mean that I'm going to not be raising kind of garbagey hands like king five or king six, hands like that. Okay. Uh, I've raised 10 jack, here, 10 jack right here, and he's re-raised me. This is obviously a very aggressive player, so I am going to mix it up with him a little bit. I've got position. I have found that he's not the type of player that's only going to be making plays with, like, you know, really good hands, things like that. Um, he's going to be making plays with a wide variety of hands. Um, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to actually float this guy. Um, floating is when you call in position with the intention of taking the, taking the pot away on the, on, the, on the turn of the river. And the reason this is going to probably work is because this guy doesn't necessarily have to have an ace or anything like that. Um, you know, he could have nothing, he could have an ace, he could have a whole lot of, a whole lot of different hands. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check behind now, and then assuming he checks the, 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 the river, I'm going to make a, a bet that looks like I kind of want to get called. I'm going to bet like 135, let's say 140, into uh, this 210 pot and fold out anything that's not an ace. I'm not going to get called by something that's an ace. Um, you know, this is, that's a play that you're going to use against a guy that is playing very aggressively. And you can't just let a guy that's playing aggressively, um, you know, just run you over. Now, I'm not going to play. You'll see I just folded 4-5 or five offsuit pre-flop. You know, 4-5 or five is, a, is a decent hand heads up at times because you can make straights. You can make kind of hands that guys won't really put you on. Um, 
So, you know, but that's not the type of hand I want to play out of position against this guy. And like a king six, he's an aggressive player, so I'm just going to fold it. I'm going to play cards that have a chance to work together. Cards that can make flushes, that can make straights, um, and preferably both if they're suited. Um, and I'm not going to get involved too much with, with marginal holdings. However, I am in position, if, if this guy's, we've seen that he's been re-raising me pretty loosely, you know, he's, he's come over the top of me twice already, and, you know, he's been double barreling, on, he's been betting a lot on the flop, I am going to call him with a hand like Jack Ace. And actually, um, this might be a situation where I would think about four betting him, actually. Um, I'm going to raise him up to, I'm actually going to four bet him right here. I'm not going to let a guy just kind of uh, continue to run me over, so I'm going to raise him up to 105. Um, he's instantly called me right there, which is kind of... Uh, Kind of interesting. Now this is a spot where it's it, a lot of guys are not going to give me credit for a hand right here. Uh, I'm going to actually check behind right here because I'm very vulnerable. If I bet, he can very easily shove on me. And that's obviously a very good card for, for me right there. Um, but I'm going to check behind again for deception purposes. Um, if you'll notice, I'm not playing my hands kind of just very standardly. I'm playing them substandardly. And that's kind of the, the, what you want to do heads up. I have to call him right here at this point. Oh, wow. So, okay, I mean, if, if you'll notice right there, I, got it, I had ace jack against king jack. He, I'm a huge favorite to win the hand seeing the flop. I mean, I wouldn't say huge, but as far as the hold'em goes, you're never really that far ahead. In that case, um, I had ace jack against king jack on the flop. Uh, he needed to catch uh, on the flop a king, and he didn't catch it, which you know time he's not going to. And then on the turn, I made my ace, which obviously is the card that I want to hit. Um, and I couldn't actually, I, I needed, I checked because I, I wanted to get some action or a bluff from a hand that he had totally missed from. I'm about 18 into a 24 with two pair here. Um, so, you know, I just, it just, it just got, I, I kind of got unlucky in that the river was the one card that made his hand, and I have to pay him off. After, after I've checked behind on the, fl on the flop and the turn, um, you know, I have to check behind right there. But you'll, if, if, what you'll see here is that, first of all, I, I feel like I'm making the right plays. I, I, didn't, I didn't bet that flop there because I thought it was very, very likely that he's going to raise me all in with any pair because he probably puts me on two big face cards. And, uh, you know, when, when aggressive players put someone on two big face cards, they'll often just shove in with, with a wide variety of holdings. So I checked behind on the, on the flop. The turn I made, I hit the card I probably wanted to hit. I, still, I probably had the best hand. I could have bet, but if I did bet and I got raised, I'd be in a pretty tricky spot. And also, I wanted to kind of decept, to play my hand maybe like I had, uh, I don't know, like a middle pair or like I had uh, two face cards that didn't hit an ace. Like there's lots of aggressive players that are going to try to bet the river no matter what happens. No, it just so happened that he did hit the card he wanted to hit, and that's going to happen sometimes. You know, he, I, I gave him a chance to hit his card. So in some ways, that's my fault, but my, what my point is here, when you're playing heads up, you need to mix up your play. You need to mix up the way you play your big hands. I four-bet him with an ace-jack against a guy that's re-raising me a lot. That's fine. Uh, I checked the flop behind, which, you know, I'm going to do sometimes with the big hand as well. Uh, the turn brought me the card I wanted. Usually, I'm going to bet that. I'm probably going to bet that like 60%, 70% of the time. However, you know, I decided to mix it up that time and, and, and see what would happen. And, uh, you know, the, the river was not a good card for me. So that, that's going to happen. And you have to understand that when you're playing heads-up poker, you're going to lose some pots. You're going to lose some hands. Um, but you need to mix up your play. And I'm kind of trying to show you guys the, the, the ways to mix up your plays and the ways that it have, have you know, helped me win a, a substantial amount of money playing heads-up on the Internet. Pocket fives, it's a hand that is, is kind of easy to play out of position. You know, you either hit your set or you don't. But you're not going to hit your set enough times and actually stack the guy to make it worthwhile just calling every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bet, I'm going to re-raise him, and I'm going to bet 60 into the 70 pot. Now, I mean, this, what's going to happen is the guy is going to call me down sometimes. So what am I going to do? Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to play the hand a little bit differently here. I'm going to check behind here and see what he does. Um, but if if he does bet, I, oh man, he just shoves in on me. So you know, this guy's obviously catching some cards, and he's also obviously a very aggressive player. I can't call right here. What I was what I was planning on doing is checking behind, and ho hopefully he would check behind as well. And then on the on the river, I was going to make a play at the pot, uh, assuming the card was a diamond or a hand that you know I could represent, or or maybe even just a blank because of the fact that uh, it's possible that you know he doesn't have anything, or he has like a jack or something that he's probably not going to call me with. Um, so just you know just a bad a bad turn a bad uh, hand that he had, or or a good play by him, one or the other. You know you got to give your opponent credit too. Um, so I have ace-king, I'm going to re-raise, just kind of like I've been doing with uh, some good hands and some marginal hands. If you'll notice, this guy's calling me every single time on the flop, on the, on this, on the flop raises. So I, I would make a note that says, uh, 
And I'm actually gonna bet again right here, just because I, I think that at this time I don't want to give up a free card, and um, I, I more than likely have the best hand. I think there's a good chance I could get him. I could get him to call me with something, if you know, if he thinks he might, I might be bluffing or something like that. But but I'm gonna make a note against this guy. Doesn't fold out of position to re-raise heads up. So now what's that? What that? What does that tell me? If I play again in the future and I, I for some reason haven't remembered him or something, um, you know, I'm I'm gonna fold the ace three. It's a hand that I can raise, but it's it's not a hand that I really want to play even in position because it's just gonna be tough. Even if I hit my ace, I don't really know where I stand. Difficult hand to play. But what I'm gonna do is I know this guy's not folding out of position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten up my re-raising requirements a little bit. I'm not gonna raise him as often. But when I do, you know, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have good hands and I'm gonna play him very, very aggressively. So, you know, this guy is just he's playing very, very aggressively. Um, I'm going to fold right here and just let this one go. Um, you know, I, I've gotten caught a couple times bluffing. I'm not sure if, sure if he really knows I'm bluffing or not, but, you know, I've been caught for sure. Um, but eventually the cards are going to even out, and I'm going to start to make some hands. Okay, here's a good example. He's re-raised me again. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 4-bet him right here. I have a very good hand. I have ace-king. I'm going to raise him up to 125, a little bit over the pot size, actually. And the stacks are getting bigger, so I'm going to raise him a little bit more. And I'm going to see what, see what he wants to do here. I'm hoping he shoves in on me, actually. Okay, that's fine. Okay, well, we have a coin flip right here. I mean, that's just going to happen sometimes. But it uh, doesn't look like I'm getting any help right here. So, you know, you get, you get all in with the coin flip heads up. You know, you can, you can do a lot worse. Um, that's just kind of, again, like a bad, a bad spot for me. Um, but the guy's incessantly re-raising me pre-flop, so I'm going to get it all in with ace-king. It's, it's just a great hand to get it all in with heads up. Um, I'd be less likely to want to get it in against, like, you know, a full, at a full ring table or a six max table because you're more often up against, like, kings or aces. But heads up, you just don't see that very often. Um, he's re raised me again, so I'm just going to fold. Uh, you know, this is a situation where this, guy could very, this guy's style could very easily tilt some other players. And, and to be honest, it would tilt me sometimes, too, because it's frustrating to play against a guy that continues to run you over. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to show you guys, you know, he's, he's taking me for a couple buy ins here. Um, but you have to understand, uh, you know, I, 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 card runners, I'm going to have to cut the video short here because we only have about 10 minutes of the, of, for these videos. But we try to show you all of our sessions. You know, this is just a win, this is a losing session. You know, so far in the, in the first whatever hands I've played, I, I'm losing here. That's going to happen. Like any poker player that tells you that they don't have losing sessions is just, is lying to you. I mean, it's going to happen and, and you're going to have to fight through them. So what I'm going to do uh, is, is tighten up my raising requirements too. He's re-raising me a ton. So I'm going to start to tighten up my raising requirements pre on the button as well as my re-raising re requirements. And I'm going to start to show this guy some good hands. He's re-raising me way too frequently to be profitable against a good player. Against a bad player who may start to make some incorrect adjustments, and he might be able to get away with it. But what I'm trying to show you guys is that uh, you know, even, the, even the best players, even, even good players, winning players, have bad sessions. And against players that you know, sometimes the cards just don't go your way. You know, I've got it all in with a coin flip, and it didn't work. Um, you know, I, I, I slow played one hand and, and, and he caught the one card he needed. It's just, it's just going to happen sometimes. So, you know, I'm hoping to show you guys some, you know, these are some basic strategies for heads up. And, um, you know, I'm going to call with a 5-6 right here. Um, it, it's kind of more of a feel thing. I haven't called for a while any of his raises, so I'm going to assume that me calling is going to, he's going to give it a little bit more respect than he normally would. Uh, this is just kind of a, the, the illustrates the problem with playing hands like this out of position because you know you totally miss the flop and what are you going to do? Just just bluff him and it becomes a very unprofitable situation. But I will take flyers with a hand like that, especially if I've been folding a lot. You can't just keep folding every single hand. Um, but um, you know I'm just kind of trying to show you guys some of the things we do at Card Runners. And although this hasn't been my, my best video results wise, I'm I'm, I'm showing you that the, the the importance of you know keeping your emotional control. And, and, and objectively um, evaluating the situations you're playing in. And I'd also like to say that, you know, when you're playing heads up poker on the internet, especially, you can lose money really fast. And what I would recommend is setting like a three buy-in or four buy-in stop loss. If you lose three or four buy-ins, quit and come back the next day because some of your worst losses can come when you're either tilting or when you, um, the other guy has a big advantage on you because he has, he's on a rush of cards. So um, that's going to be the video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and, and look forward look to my for my heads up column in uh, the next Card Player magazine. Thanks a lot.